Hey, I really hope you enjoyed my cover of Gravity by Architects. I'm excited to do this lesson video because this will be the first of its kind that I've done. In my other lesson videos, I typically take you through certain sections of the song that I found difficult. For this lesson video, I'm going to take you through the entire song. I'm going to go in order section by section. I'm going to have small talking breaks in between where I explain a little bit of what comes next and then jump right in. This format for this video will be similar to my others in the sense that I'm going to play a part of the song in chronological order, starting with 175 beats per minute, and then I'm going to slow it down to 120. So, let's start at the top. The very first section is the intro. The thing I really like about this song is that the intro of this song lays down a pattern that's going to be used throughout the entire track. As you learn the song, you're going to find this pattern all over the place. The pattern revolves around groups of seven and groups of three. The first half of the intro lays down the pattern that I spoke about. The second half is going to be a series of fills that transitions you into what you could call the first verse of the song. Here's the intro now. So moving along, the next section is going to play the snare pattern from the intro, but on the feet, while keeping quarter note time on the china. The patterns aren't exact, so be sure to listen closely to each section. One thing I can say before we move on is every section in this song, while it's very similar to other pieces of the song, no two sections are exactly the same. I'm going to play the next section now. So coming out of this section, we're going to move into the second half of the verse, or verse 1.2. This part also serves as sort of a pre-chorus. This section is very snare driven, it's fairly open, and it's going to use that same 7 grouping on your feet again. Pay attention closely to my velocities in this section. Here's verse 1.2 now. So the next piece I'm going to play for you is the chorus. This chorus is very unique and different from a lot of the songs that I've learned, especially by architects. There's a very defined center line in the chorus where once you pass it, you're going to change the patterns you're playing and repeat different ones. At first listen, this chorus is going to seem a little unorganized just because of some lack of repetition. When I learned this section, I took it as one piece, as one whole. Although it is because of how long it is, it may be easier for you to break it into two halves or even quarters. But definitely halves because if you draw a line at the center line and learn the first section and then the second section, dividing it straight in half, you're going to see that the repetition that this chorus has happens on either side of that center line. Here's the first chorus now.
up next is the post chorus. I'm calling it the post chorus. If you look at this song backed out, you could call this the first half of the second verse. Um, this song doesn't follow a lot of typical structures, so because of that, I'm not sure what the terminology we want to specifically use for this part, but I'm just going to call it the post chorus. The post chorus is split into two halves. What you're going to notice is again we're going back to that same snare pattern that we used at the intro. I'm going to put that on my feet again, but this time around I'm going to use the snare drum to accent the beginning of every note cluster. When I performed this section for the cover video, I played it open hand with my left hand on the hi-hat and my right hand on the snare. For the lesson video, I'm going to play my right hand on the hi-hat and my left hand on the snare drum. You can play it either way, it just comes down to comfort. I prefer to play open hand most of the time, but because most people do play this way if they're right hand dominant, I felt that for the lesson video it would be easier for people to pick up if I played it like this. But once again, it doesn't really matter. Here's the post chorus first half. So moving right along, the second half of this post chorus is definitely going to be a little bit more challenging than the first half. It's a breakdown pattern with a couple of really cool fills at the end of it. The only thing I want to stress about this part is at the end of the section, make sure to watch the cymbal placement I am using during the fill. When I first listened to the recording, it sounded to me like straight quarter notes on a crash cymbal. But when I went back and took a closer listen, I discovered that the crash pattern isn't straight, it's a broken pattern as well. The crash pattern I'm referring to, you can spot by looking for the part in the section in which I move from my right 19 inch crash to my left 17 and then back to right and then back to left. It's the five final crash hits before I move out of the section. Here's the second half of post chorus one. So after the post chorus, there's a eight bar dropout and then I come back in with a snare roll. This snare roll section, I learned pretty quickly because all of the accents land on my dominant right hand. This section two really is the meat of what is the second verse. After this section, we move right on into the second chorus. So here is the snare roll in the second verse. Alright, so at the conclusion of this roll, there's another dropout. This one's only four bars long, and this acts as the pre-chorus into the second chorus. There are only two choruses in this song. The second chorus, while similar to the first chorus, has a lot of differences. 
So make sure to review both choruses as separate sections and don't just learn the first chorus and then play it over the second chorus. You're going to find the patterns won't line up. Alright, so after the second chorus, we're just about done the song. We've got two more quick sections to cover, and that's the track. The first section coming out of the second chorus, I'm going to call Post Chorus 2. It's a very straightforward section because we've already played it. This section is almost identical to the section that gets played right after the intro in the beginning of the song. There is some small differences though near the end of the section. Specifically, the fill taking us out of this section is different from when we first played this section near the beginning of the song. This should be a quick learn just because of how similar it is. Just get that new fill down and you're good to move on. So we made it, let's talk about the last section of the song, or the outro. This is a breakdown that's reminiscent of the second half of the first post-chorus. I was calling post-chorus 1.2. This is probably the most challenging part of the song. You have to pay close attention to where the China's landing. It doesn't land in straight eighth notes or quarter notes. It may take some time getting used to a broken halftime pattern like the China is playing in this part. The second half of this section, is almost identical to post-chorus 1.2. Only difference is we're gonna change up the cymbal placement just a little bit, and there's gonna be a fill that concludes the song. Here's the outro now. I really appreciate you guys checking out my cover and my lesson video on the song Gravity by Architects. If you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed the cover video that goes along with this, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys soon with something new.